Have you ever wanted a device that plays Game Boy Advance games, is small enough to fit in your sock, How practical. and even looks like a Game Boy Micro? Well, you're in luck, because this is the Miu A30, and it's one tiny package. Just reminding everyone, we are giving away an Ambernic RG405M at the end of July, so if you'd like to be considered, subscribe down below. Now let's get back into this teeny tiny little eclair. This is the next addition to the Miyu Mini lineup, and it is a tiny, fantastic little package. It takes all the regular controls and scheme that we're used to with the Miyu Minis, and puts it into a horizontal form factor, and that is, adds just one joystick. They've made a few other interesting decisions on the hardware, so let's dive in and look at this thing even closer. And up close on the front of the device, we have a D-pad that is squishy and not clicky. A, B, X, Y buttons that are also squishy and not clicky. A singular joystick that is sunk into the bottom of the device and is clicky and not squishy. Start and select buttons that are squishy and not clicky. We also have a vent for some sound to come out. We also have a 2.8 inch IPS panel that's at 640 by 480 resolution. And a 2600 milliamp hour battery lasting between, you know, 3 and 5 hours. On the left side of the device, we have nothing. But on the right side of the device, we have a power button that is clicky and not squishy. In addition to two indicator lights for status and charging. On the bottom of the device, we have one SD card slot and that's it. And on the top is where they hit all the good stuff. L, L2, R, and R2 trigger buttons that are all a bit squishy and not clicky. In addition to a volume rocker that is clicky and not squishy, and a home button that is also clicky and not squishy. This comes down to the last USB-C port. This is the only port on the device, and they also included a headphone to USB-C jack that actually works and sounds pretty good. And on the back of the device to round everything out, we have some screw holes and some branding. Other than that, this thing is bare bones as it should be, and I think it looks pretty good doing it. Now I think the hardware is where this device shines. Adding that extra joystick means playing some N64 games is a lot easier. And having those big buttons on the tiny form factor really makes this thing much more playable. And I know what you're all thinking, there's another eclair sized device that we have to talk about, but we'll do that in a little bit. And I really do like how small they've made this device, but they also managed to fit that singular joystick in here, which really does make a difference when you're playing different consoles like the N64. In addition to not adding a screen lens, which when you look at this thing, it looks like you're looking into the device because there's no like glass or sheen on top of the, the display itself. Looks really interesting compared to the other stuff that has a piece of plastic or glass over top of it. It looks very retro, just because that bezel kind of dies into the top of the display. It's very interesting. But let's talk about the software next, because there are some things we need to talk about. And the software we need to talk about is the stock MIUI A30 software. Now this is a Linux-based system, so each company generally has to make their front end for the Linux distro that these little handhelds run on. All of the menu items are laid out very easily. The game section tab is where MIUI has decided what emulator settings they would like to use and have placed them in here. I think the UI looks better in this section, but under the RetroArch settings, things change a little bit because you can save your own profiles and make your own decisions on this side. And for everything Game Boy Color and below, this device is fantastic for. After that, we have the Game Boy Advance, and I think this device is a fantastic little Game Boy Advance emulator. We also have some great PlayStation 1 emulation here with the entire collection being totally playable. And other things like the Sega Game Gear, Famicom, and even Pico 8 games run pretty well on this device. This is where it kind of gets weird because we go up to N64 and some of the games will play, but not all of them will play at full speed. In addition to that, we have PSP emulation on here, but we were just having issues with N64, so I'm not quite sure what this is doing on here. Now, it does run and you were able to play some games on here, but it's kind of odd. In addition to that, I also was able to put Drastic on here, but wasn't able to get any of the Drastic games to run. So, Nintendo DS emulation on here right now with the version I have and the software that I have does not work. And this is kind of where it gets weird. Let me explain. So, for the size of this thing, I think it really does a fantastic job of emulating a bunch of different consoles. But, this power level and software is not really up to snuff of what everything else can do right now. And I think this is part into Miyu being good at making devices and not really good at making software. So let's make a comparison. It does a fantastic job of Game Boy Advance and even some higher-end devices, but 
this does bring us to uh, who else is in the market. You can grab this thing for $36 from AliExpress. Now the only issue with that is you don't know when it'll be back in stock and how much you're gonna have to pay for shipping and handling. You can also get this device from websites like who sent this over to me, litnxt.com, where you can get it $50 with free shipping. Those links are down below. But this brings in our other competitor, the Ambernic RG28XX. And it's in a similar price category and from the same website if you'd like to grab it from them because they give me a kickback, which will eventually get me out of my basement. I love to not smell laundry. And no. And I'm sick of watching you play with devices. You still have to live on the wall. Fine. The Embernic RG28XX is the similar size device with a similar power range and features, but the difference here is Ambernic really flushed out the software a little bit more before they released it. So being able to play stuff like Nintendo DS games right out of the box, it was able to do that. This one, I was able to get drastic on it, but I wasn't able to get it to port correctly and run the actual ROMs. It just didn't work for me. I'm not sure if it'll happen later on, which it did with all the other MiU devices, but it's not here right now. But the big issue I have with the Ambernic device is the ergonomics on it, on it aren't that great. I really like the feel and the playability of the MiU, but for the Ambernic, its buttons are just really freaking small. The D-pad I'm okay with, but those tiny little chiclet buttons on the right-hand side are just too small. The ABXY buttons need to be a little bit bigger, and on the MiU, they're absolutely huge. Now, barring the software, if you get to this video a little bit later and the software has been updated, which you can check and see on MiU's website if they've updated it to play drastic completely, or if someone's released Onion OS for this thing, then it'll play drastic. Then it's down to which console you think looks better and which you would actually play more frequently. I think for me, the MiU with Onion OS on it and being able to play Nintendo DS games, I would personally go for the MiU, but you have to remember, it doesn't have a screen lens, so if you're somebody who's clumsy, you might want to go with a screen lens because you can replace that, but these are cheap devices. I'm throwing it in my pocket either way. Or, if you're watching it right now in July of 2024, the Ambernic has more flushed out software. And if you just want an easier experience and just want to load up your ROMs and play, that's what I'd go with right now. So, it's a toss-up between whatever you think because they're both similarly priced and similarly performing. So, it's really up to you. They come in a bunch of different colors. I think the MiU just looks way better. The Ambernic doesn't, is no slouch either. So, it's totally up to you, but this has been the review of the A30, and I think the A30 is great. If you're looking for more information on the Ambernic, here's that video, and you can take a look at it right now. But if you're looking for something else, maybe something bigger, or even a roundup of all the better handhelds that are horizontal, take a look right here, because we've got you covered. Till then, that's all I got. Davey out. <laughs>